Thank you for participating in the 10th annual Black Star Film Festival. We would like to thank our funders and individual donors, as well as our network of producing and community partners. This panel, Going Back to Get It, on cinematic archival practice, is co-presented by Black Public Media and Impact Partners. The runtime for this program is 60 minutes, including audience Q&A. Please leave your questions in the comments and we'll do our best to engage with them. Please follow us on all social media platforms at Black Star Fest and use the hashtags BSFF21 and Black Star 10. Don't forget to fill out our audience evaluation and vote for your favorite films. We hope you have a wonderful time during the 2021 Black Star Film Festival. Oh, there we go. Hi, and welcome to the 10th annual Black Star Film Festival. I'm Rashid Zakat. I'm a filmmaker, artist, and resident interloper here at Black Star, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to the wonderful minds assembled for this panel. Uh, first, I want to start with our moderator, Savannah Wood, who is an artist and cultural organizer with Deep Roots in Baltimore, blah, blah, and Los Angeles. As the archives director for the 129-year-old Afro-American newspapers and the executive director of the Afro Charities, she creates programming and infrastructure to, to, cre to increase access to the Afro's rich archives. Tutu Matson Soto is an activist for the preservation of and public access of audiovisual archives in Mexico, principally in community contexts. She founded the Archive Experiences Seminar, a project that seeks to that seeks to exchange ideas about the preservation and exhibition of archival films. She is currently in charge of the videographic, iconic, and digital collections at the Cineteca Nacional de Mexico. Mahasin Nasir Eddin is a Jerusalem-born director. Her films tell the stories of resistance and resilience in pre- and post-Nakba Palestine. Mahasin currently teaches at the Film Production and Film Study, teaches Film Production and Film Study, sorry, at the Dar al Kalima University College of Arts and Culture in Bethlehem. Thank you all so much for being a part of this conversation. This is one of the panels I've been the most psyched to see, and I will toss it over to our moderator, Savannah. Thank you. Thank you, Rashid, and thank you to everybody at Black Star. Congratulations on 10 years of a fantastic, fantastic program. One of the best things that happens every single year. I'm super excited to be here um, with these brilliant thinkers and makers and just grateful to be a part of this conversation. Um, to start, I just wanna lay a little bit of a foundation so we know where everybody's coming from. So for Tsutsu and Mahasin, if you could just um, give a little bit of background about where you're calling in from, and how your work relates to the archive. We can open it that way. Tutu, you wanna go first? Yes, uh, well, good morning or good afternoon in the place where you are, no? <laughs> Here in Mexico City is good morning still. I'm in Xochimilco. Uh, the name is uh, uh, in a Nahuatl language that means uh, place of the flowers and that's why I'm with flowers. And I am I am archivist maybe from uh, since 15 years ago when I wanted to be a documentary filmmaker. You know? So I started to make researches and I started to work in a research institute and I found that uh, that um, the archive itself has to has a lot of things to 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 say, no, not just as a documentary filmmaker, also as an archivist. So uh, this is how I started, and now I work with different different uh, communities, but also with my own community in Xochimilco. I have a a project that it's called. Uh, uh, experimental society of audiovisuals uh, that uh, now we are encouraging people to make a digital collections about our own uh, identity and history. And at the same time, I work in the national film, uh, in the Cineteca Nacional. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mahasin? Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Mahasan and I'm based in Palestine. I'm stuck in traffic between two cities. I'm trying to get to Jerusalem uh, from Bethlehem. Uh, so I decided to park my car to pursue this uh, 
conversation with um, you wonderful people. I'm very proud and humbled to be with you today. Uh, basically, what brings me to the archive is base, is, is um, my uh, story with uh, Karima Aboud, who's uh, considered uh, one of the first Palestinian female photographers. And we're talking about uh, 1894 uh, is when she was born. And... Uh, she lived until 1940, but uh, through her archives, which are really scattered all over, uh, because Palestine in Palestine we don't have a national archive, uh, but basically it was through uh, the story of Karima Aboud and the, the work that I was doing, the research that I was doing uh, about, uh, uh, about her life uh, got me into the archives. And uh, the way I look at the archives, specifically in the context of Palestine, again, where this, the, 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 you know, it's, it's the research that we do when we, we're doing uh, research in the archive is very much uh, uh, related to colonial archives and finding the story of subaltern communities in, in uh, colonial archives. So it's questions around how do we access this archive? You know, how do we decipher it? How we understand the logic of the classification when we know that, uh, you know, when we're looking for stories uh, that are denied by the, that archive itself. Uh, so this is, you know, a, 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 some ideas uh, that we can pursue later mm -hmm. in the discussion, but yeah. Wonderful. And I think it's so interesting. I mean, it doesn't, it's not surprising, I guess, that all of us kind of came into the archive through the arts. So um, Susu, you were looking at documentary filmmaking and that, line of inquiry took you deeper into the archives or Mahasin, you're looking at a photographer and that brought you in. For me, I was working mm -hmm. with an arts organization in Chicago and that was my first introduction to archives was that the artist I was working for had huge collections that he had sort of inherited from other places and was using it to recontextualize it in his own artwork. And then through another mm -hmm. organization in Los Angeles, working with Octavia Butler's collection at the Huntington Library, similarly, working with artists and writers to reinterpret this collection. And so I think for all of us, um, we come to the archives with an understanding of how they might be used and translated into other art forms. So we're already creating this sort of um, translation of what's on the page into what could be. Um, but I wanted to tap into what Mahasan started talking about because it comes up in um, her film um, the Silent Protest, which I think screened yesterday and the day before at Black Star. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You remember? So and I don't know if it's still available to screen now, but it's really wonderful. And I'd love it if you could give a little bit of background about that short film and then to talk a bit mm -hmm. about the process of um, conducting archival research, particularly from colonial powers who were viewing the subjects that you're interested in as a problem and how you sort of navigated those collections to tell the story you wanted to tell and how that related um, or was different mm -hmm. from some of the Palestinian sources that you had um, to create this film. So if you could first start yep. with just a little bit of background mm -hmm. about the film and then go into that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've been working on this topic for quite some time now, and it's basically the Palestinian women's movement pre-1948, pre the establishment of the State of Israel. Uh, and basically it's when uh, women, Palestinian women have decided that they need to be uh, carving space themselves uh, uh, for themselves in society, uh, but also, you know, taking uh, a role in the in, in the politics of of of, uh, and, and of the times. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, one thing is is really important, I think, to the story is uh, how women chose the point in time to come out mm -hmm. to the public to say that here we are, we are organizing ourselves, we have, uh, we have a feminist project, right, that previously, maybe, you know, we, we don't look at it as, as, uh, as uh, in terms of, of how we view feminism today, but, you know, uh, it, it was a very much feminist project. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, uh, looked into the politics of the time that, 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 uh, uh, as well, well as you know like women at that point also were trying to push the the the, the women's agenda 
and and the rights uh, in society, uh, patriarchal society, uh, local as well as colonial, uh, uh, um, the, the colonial structures, right? So in a way, I was trying to um, think about uh, women as uh, women with agency, you know, women negotiating patriarchal structures, uh, uh, trying to carve for themselves space in, in, in for themselves in public space. So it's also mm -hmm. a lot about the body, the, the, the politics of the body, you know, because they are protesting, they are bringing themselves outside uh, uh, to the public sphere. They are also, uh, um, you know, also if, if we look at Palestine from that point, of, from that times, you know, it, it was modern times. So this, you know, it, I mean, we're talking about first wave feminism uh, 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 in Palestine uh, when we compare mm -hmm. it to other places in the world. The idea was is to to you know to try and uh, and think about ways to write the story through uh, through image and sound. You know how mm -hmm. do we act, how do we use the archives to write a historical story, uh, but also that makes sense today, that has reson resonance with with the present times. Uh, so previously, uh, um, uh, Palestinian women were putting their feminist project part and parcel uh, with the national, in quotations, project, you know. So, for instance, mm -hmm. they were saying that we need to first to liberate the land and then we will liberate, we will liberate the woman, right? We will, we will attain our rights through the state system, which is now, you know, if we look at, you know, like this is an example, for instance, of how uh, we can use uh, uh, what happens in the past to reflect on the future, in the, on the present and the future. When now, you know, the whole uh, uh, state system is is being in question, you know, can actually mm -hmm. the state and I think bring us our, our rights or not as women. And I think this is also a universal question now, right? It's not only a local question to Palestinian women. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, I mean, through this film and through this work, I try to bring back history to the present as well as to the future uh, uh, to understand, you know, to understand uh, uh, what women did in the past and how it resonates with our thinking process as women, our, our goals as women, where we want to, uh, uh, how, how do we project into the future as women, you know, working on a feminist uh, project. Uh, but again, you know, that's also, uh, that is local, but as well, that is, that is universal. Mm -hmm. And one and, of the things that's so uh, fascinating, oh, mm -hmm. go ahead. Yeah, please, please go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was going to say one of the things that I found to be really interesting is that your, you know, your film is focused on these women, of course, as the subjects, um, as the main characters of the film. But because of the ways in which the archival documents were kept, we were seeing uh, documents from the French government, from the British government. Mm -hmm. um, you yes. get a sense of what they're up against because of the way that those documents are written. Uh, and so there's a subtlety in the way that we get that um, through just the documents that you reference and the language that's there, but then there's also the you know direct confrontation in the narration that you use. Um, and I just think that that is a really effective way of kind of like flipping this colonial archive um, mm -hmm. to tell a, a, a more nuanced story about that history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, mean, really I mean, it's interesting. It, Thanks a lot for, for this wonderful comment, because, uh, uh, you know, I mean, when I started doing uh, the research in colonial archives, uh, I mean, very naively, I was I was trying to use words uh, in the search engines, you know, that are that I'm familiar with. Right. You know, so I was I was doing, you know, like uh, 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 women, women, Palestinian women's protests. Uh, 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 but then slowly, you know, I and even, you know, I, I, I met I, through my encounters with with archivists, you know, so many times they're like, oh, your, your, your project is not viable. You know, you're not going to find information here. But then by coincidence, I started stumbling upon uh, files of, of, of people who did espionage work and, you know, spies, you know, files of spies who were who were collecting information about the country. And then this is wow. where the gem was, right? It, it was it right. was in the files of these men, white men, right, who were who were in the country collecting information about, you know, general information, but also, you know, like the women's movement was also of interest to them, uh, uh, for for different reasons. Uh, uh, 
but basically it was there and then that I started finding information. And then that right. completely shifted my, my approach and my thinking to how I can, I can uh, approach the archives, how I can decipher the archives, how I can, you know, understanding this logic of archives, because I think it's really important that uh, uh, we uh, understand the logic of, of the archives that we are working in in order for us to uh, uh, to lo locate the materials that that we are you know we, we, we are looking for and and, and again you know like when people were telling me you know like the, the, your story is not viable here you know and and i and we know we know you know colonizers have colonized have stolen have, have taken away uh, uh, our, our archives because it's it's a source of information right um but then to go back more to your question is is of how uh, uh, you subvert, right? You, you subvert this material, uh, mm -hmm. and it's exactly that. It's uh, it's it's you know through the information that I was finding, and then juxtaposing that 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 material, you know, that archival material from the colonial archives with local stories and historical accounts that were uh, collected through the community, through people in the community, through local researchers, uh, to fill in the gaps, basically. Uh, right, right. And also, local newspapers were also really helpful in uh, from the time. Oh, uh, yeah, in uh, uh, in connecting all this material together. That's wonderful. Thank you. And and Zuzu, <laughs> I want to talk to you a little bit because your um, your article that's in Scene Magazine that was produced by Black Star. You talk. Um, you you open the article talking about these archives that are compiled by other people, that you were looking for information about your own community and all you found was information about um, compiled by tourists or ethnographers, but that recently, or rather with the advent of VHS cameras that were more readily available, there was a movement of people documenting their own communities or having the means to document their own communities. So I would love it if you could talk a little bit about um, TV Temex, which you mentioned in this article, and just, how how community-based archives might differ from more academic archives and what you've found in your research and in any projects that you've found that have been really inspiring that are maybe less academic but really culturally relevant and content that is produced by the community that is featured in it. Um, thank you very much for your question. And I would like to link this question also with something that uh, Mahasen says about the experience to be in an archive or to get through an archive because this is a not this is not a natural experience you have to create some knowledge or to connect uh, uh, how the structure of the archives works and who is uh, who is in charge of this archive and uh, what kind of question could you ask and, right. and what kind of question you cannot ask, or if you are going to to put these um, uh, words like labels in the in the things, what are you going to obtain? No? So I think this is interesting also in the case of Tevetamics, and also in my case when I started to look about my own culture in the institutional uh, archives, the national archives. Uh, mainly in the ethnographic uh, ethnographic archives because uh, I uh, learned uh, so at the beginning that my identity is a level um, a level uh, a word in an archive. No, I am not just Ochimilka and Tebetamic. They are not just Mijes as in their in our own words. We have a word in other language. So we uh, began to understand this uh, this dictionary of our experience no a, a dictionary mm -hmm. in the ex, in the archive experiences that is not that and they are right in our story in not in our works no so i think tebetamic tebetamics is one of the examples of this um not just a technical approach or or, uh, or how to learn uh, techniques of how to preserve their own culture. It's also a philosophical uh, experience about their culture, their own culture. They started in this process in the at the late 80s and the beginning of the 90s in a program, well, not, not just in this program, but mainly in this program that the National Institute Institute for Indigenous People uh, started in the 90s that they, they realized that they cannot 
continue making movies about um, indigenous community, they started to, to, to think that they have to uh, transfer the knowledge. The name of the program was the, uh, tra the Media Transfer Program in order to mm. transfer in this knowledge, this te technical knowledge, no? And TV Tamix uh, started at the same time uh, knowing this program, but also um, the, nat the national TV broadcasting uh, sell mm -hmm. to, uh, in the, to um, a commercial company, their, the, all their equipment, and in this town, in, the, in Tamazula Panmije, they let, they, they leave a antenna or this the the mm -hmm. equipment to to transmit or something like that, and they learn how to use it. So they started this independent autonomous um, project of, of broadcasting, and in a town that they just have maybe uh, ten uh, uh, TVs, ten TVs. So okay. they 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 really didn't do it for a massive uh, distribution of the of, of their content they started to say we can do it we can know technology and it's not about technology it's about how we can uh, say the things in our own work so it, mm -hmm. in, in in that beginning uh, they didn't think about the archive or what is archive or or we are going to create future or we are creating present not trying to take the place of the past. We are creating present because we live now as the people is living now. So uh, now in the, I don't I mean 25 or 30 years after this experience, they are taking those uh, knowledge or philosophical knowledge about creating images in the experience of creating an archive that is creating present, not future and not just present, is creating relationships, relations with other mm -hmm. parts of the community. And this experience is not always happy. Sometimes they have to translate the experience in their own language, in the Mije language. They speak this uh, language that is uh, Mije because they don't have the words to express the archival vocabulary. So I am mm. uh, going back to the idea of Mahasen uh, that she said that is a translation of experiences, not just about the language like, a, uh, like English to Spanish in a very right. simple way. It's about how to translate a philosophical experiences about our own words to express our history, our present and our future, and also understand that we are leading with other expressions. And here I'm going to put like we are leading with archivists. We have to translate with archivists in institutions. We have to mm -hmm. translate to other parts of the community. And we are going to translate also to researchers, to academicals, and also mm -hmm. to filmmakers. No? And I'm going to finish here my comment because this last point is also interest interesting. Five years ago, when I started to work in, in a project of um, organizing part of, of the collection, we made a, like a rules. Who can see our images? No? Who can mm -hmm. speak about our images? And one of the rules was that some materials, you cannot show them without uh, a, a people of the community. You cannot leave it in the internet. You, if you are going to speak about our images, somebody mm -hmm. uh, some, from the community must be beside the, the, the screen. So yeah. I think this is the kind of technical thing that we create in community context, but also we are uh, aware and we and we have the conscience that we are at the same level of, with other speeches about the art. No, we are not just one, or there are not just one. There are many, and that's it in my first comment. That's mm -hmm. fascinating. I was going to ask you, you know, how is how is this experience? How is this knowledge? Um, affect the work that you're doing at um at the Cineteca um because that is a national archive and so how how are these translations that you're aware of all of this um how has that changed the way that you approach the national archive and who has access there mm -hmm. if there's anything else you want to say about that you can add it but I, we said a lot already which is great <laughs> 
Well, I, I could add something. I could add uh, something mm -hmm. about this. I, I have been working there nine years, maybe this the next month, something like this. And sometimes it's very frustrating because I, mm -hmm. I, I'm not the I'm not in charge of everything related to the public access, but I can say that me and other partners changed the way how the people could access to the to the archive. And I think one of the steps was um, uh, uh, be conscious, have the conscious that we cannot say everything about our collections. We cannot, and the people before us uh, couldn't do it. So we need that more uh, people. I don't want to use the word users or, um, or yes, users, because we need another uh, storytellers, not storytellers. If we see the people as storytellers, they are going to to uh, to want to say something. It's not just that they are going to ask us; is that they are going to say something about our collection. So, the problem about this idea is that you need a lot of time with every person that asks to the archive. No, but if we change the, this idea that the that the catalog or the uh, methodology of the public access could give you all the, the the answers. I think it was important changing the way of uh, how the institution give access to the collection. But at the same time, uh, I think that in my career, I, I have uh, been involved in many experiences that I, uh, where I learn a lot and I create different um, community archives. But the institution didn't want to know about this. No? Sometimes it mm. says when some inst um, a small archive or local archive asks to the Cineteca about something, they say, well, Sutsu could speak with you, but it's not something that it's in the public, um, in, the, in the political, in the politics, in the policies, in the, mm. oh, in the policies. Not in the, in the policies. It's not in the policies. Mm. So I, I, it's not, uh, it's not, a very sad thing is you if you notice that we are making our our culture here, you know. And I believe that sometimes we are going to change this structure of power and this structure of speeches about our identity, and everybody could ask whatever they want, even if I'm not mm -hmm. working there. Yeah, even if you're not there, that's. Uh. Yes. yes. <laughs> I think about that all the time, how sometimes it's just one person who's holding, you know, you're the, the gatekeeper, essentially, and mm -hmm. whether or not that person has the cultural context, cares about your project, that will determine where, how far you can go in your research. And I thought it was so interesting what you said about, um, or maybe Mahasan, I think you might have said this earlier, about there are certain questions that you cannot ask of the archive because of the way that it's cataloged, the way that it's organized. And then there are ways in which, you know, Tsutsu, like you were saying, there's these, the catalogs that are available online don't have all the information in there. So I, I want, and we're sad that Darius isn't here today uh, to be on the panel, but he brought something up in a call earlier about the work that he's been doing and the fact that so much of the content that he was looking for was never actually published. He was looking at, I think, ABC, um, a national broadcaster here, ABC's um, archives, mm -hmm. and looking for things that had aired, but they had a huge collection of film that had never been shown before. And so, you know, the ways mm -hmm. in which archives can kind of obscure the information that's held within it is also affects mm -hmm. how we understand culture, um, affects mm -hmm. the questions that we think we can get answered. And, mm -hmm. and so I'm just, you know, I'm just like getting into that. I don't know where we're going to go with that quite yet, <laughs> but I think it's just a super interesting thing to do. I guess, I guess one of the questions um, I have, and maybe Mahasan, you can answer this one, is because you were able to answer some of the questions that you went after um, by using different search techniques, like stumbling across things in the archive and having them unfold in front of you, um, coincidentally, which I think is always just like, you know, the story wanted to be told, so they found you. <laughs> uh, yeah. so we could talk about like haunting in the archive too, because there's like, there's a lot of spiritual energy in there. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. But I wonder um, what you, you know, how you would 
talk about what your retrieval of this information, your reinterpretation of this information, or the mm -hmm. reclamation of this history, um, how you think about that as adding to culture and adding to a conversation and, you know, mm -hmm. sort of reframing history and just how you situate your work in that way. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, you know, I, I think that um, my approach to using the archive, you know, I, I don't think, I, I don't like to think the archive as archaic, you know, uh, and, and also history, you know, when I think about history, I, you know, it's, it's always this outlook on, you know, I, I try to uh, uh, approach history through a lens uh, that focuses or that garners uh, this idea of uh, a, a dynamic uh, a life, a dynamic history, uh, something that's moving, something that's flexible, uh, and not, you know, in a chronological or linear uh, uh, order. You know, it's 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 information, and particularly when we we're talking about histories of marginalized groups, histories of marginalized people. You know. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, so much of women's history, uh, you know, is, is still is, is still needs to be told, right? We are still thinking of of we're we're still searching for the story and then thinking about how to tell the story, right? Uh, so I'm always uh, guided by these uh, by these questions, you know, of of how 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 we can make history uh, resonate with the present and the future, and then uh, also the 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 fact the reality that uh, a Palestinian archive does not exist. It's scattered all over the world. Um, and also, you know, trying to find strength in this, you know, trying to find areas uh, where uh, uh, there is all this space for imagination, you know, imagine the past. Uh, again, from a point of view that's very much relevant to today, you know, from a positionality uh, of today, uh, where we are seeking justice, you know, we are seeking uh, equality, uh, uh, and we, you know, and also we are we are uh, carving further space in public spheres, right? Uh, but again, you know, I, I I think this whole thing with you know this whole idea of of I I imagining the past through the archive, uh, and this is where you know from the narrative of of the film. Uh, where uh, uh, you know uh, when I wrote the narrative, right? When I wrote the 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 the, the uh, this voiceover, you know, uh, it was very much uh, connected with the material that I I I, I found uh, that is written by women from the time, but also trying to think and imagine uh, how these women were able to achieve what they did. Okay, from the context of of today, from the from the struggles of of that we have as women, we are facing as women on you know on the local, uh, on on a personal level, and also on a local level and 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 on on, on wider in wider circuits. Uh, so yeah, I think you know uh, uh, this gives us a space. Actually, it gives us more uh, leeway uh, to also connect with other histories, you know, with other histories of marginalized groups, you know, uh, uh, with other histories of, uh, uh, of, of, you know, of, 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 of groups with similar stories, right, with, with groups whose, whose stories have been denied, they've been denied from telling their, their you know, the, their, their history, uh, and also uh, communities who are very much based on, uh, on writing their history through oral, through oral history, through co the collection of oral accounts, uh, uh, talking with the elderly, uh, uh, relating to the elderly, you know, uh, uh, yeah. So um, yeah. again, you know, this I whole idea of the archive is not archaic, right? The archive is not static. Mm -hmm. uh, the archives is something that you know that that is is used in the past, today, and in the future in this you know very flexible, malleable way. Yeah, one of the things that really struck me in your film uh, was one. It was near the beginning of the film. There's a almost mm -hmm. opening line that's like, "I am narrating mm -hmm. today the history that will unfold in the future," and and that really sets okay. us up for this notion of like we're not going on a linear time frame. We're we're circular, and the ways in which you talk about, um, you know, having space for reimagining and. The film, mm -hmm. many parts of it are driving through the streets. And so the, the land becomes 
very much a character in your film. Um, and the site where the history happened and also the present where we're looking at what's happening now. And through the film, you're creating your own archive in a way of the day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. um, and right. the people who are walking through the streets. So you, and it's really so beautifully done how you have these archival mm -hmm. examples, the photographs that you were able to find mm -hmm. and then right. intersections mm -hmm. that I'm not sure that they're the same intersection, but they have a similar resonance and that, but that's an updated version from today. Mm -hmm. And so we start to understand ourselves as part of this continuum of history, start to look mm -hmm. at the um, material reality of what these mm -hmm. women were dealing with. Like you were talking about really trying to imagine how they accomplished what they did at this time period mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know where, where they may have succeeded, where there's still work to be done. And you mm -hmm. really create a visual record of all of that. I think it's just so beautifully done. Right, right, right. Uh, I'm also thinking also, you know, like of uh, when I think of, of you know, of, of the story, uh, it's also maybe important to pinpoint that the, the travel that you see, it's basically, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to go back to the same roads that women took when they were denied to uh, uh, create the pro the, the, their, their protest, you know, to carry out their protest on foot. So they decided to roam the streets in a, in a car convoy. So I was I was trying to follow, you know, to 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 look and search uh, for the streets that they have gone that, that they may have gone through to reach their destination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And then and so you're dropped into that reality, you're dropped into that physical reality through the film, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. um, so can you talk a little bit about well, you did talk about time a bit, so I'll, I'll leave that alone. Um, but if you have anything else that you wanted to share just about how the history stacks and layers and how we interact with it, I'd be happy to hear more about it. If not, we can move on. That's fine. Okay. So one of the things that um, I wanted to ask you both is just about the, the way that you make archival research visible in your work also. Um, so, so, so you shared a short film um, that we get to see behind the scenes of people packing up VHS tapes and just the actual accumulation of these materials, which can, you know, can look different from um, a more academic archive. And then Mahasan in your film, we actually see you scrolling through the microfilm and I just wonder if you could share a little bit about like why you found it important to actually show the mechanics of um, conducting archival research as part of the film and, and what that does um, in both instances. And um, mm -hmm. Tutsu, if you could give a little bit of background about your short film as well. Um, so to set that up, that would be great. Uh, yeah, th this short that you are talking about is Cinema, cinema A or how to, to cure the archive sickness, no? archival sickness, that is uh, related to this Derrida, very famous article about the, the, the archive. No? And this is, a, this is a collection in, in the mountain of Oaxaca that is called Huautla de Jimenez, and known because they, are, they have the, uh, a culture related to the consume, consuming uh, fungi, fungi, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yes, to, to have, a, to make a, a, another kind of uh, mystical travels, no? <laughs> so in this play, uh, uh, in Avid, this collection, and we were part of a process with other collections, also with the Betamics, Wautla and others in other parts of Oaxaca, uh, in the beginning of something that I call uh, inaugurating order or the opening mm -hmm. of the order, no? How to create this performance of a start an archive, no? and mm. in this um, in this short that I make with that I made with Elena Pardo, uh, an experimental filmmaker, uh, we try to show the imagination of a collection because they the 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 owner the Inti Inti Dorantes that is the son of this um, uh, this man Renato Garcia Dorantes that used to be the uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, well, he created this collection of, of things related to the Mazateca culture. So the, the, the son Inti wanted to make an archive, but for many years, 
he couldn't do it. So it's an aspiration and an expectative expect to create it, to to not just to create the the um, the space for an archive, also to create the connection to with the community because the community used to say that this is not uh, this has no value, this is not useful for the community. They must uh, use their time in other things. So they have to create this connection. So uh, in order to present him and also to the community, the idea of the feeling to be involved in an archive, mm. we created this, this short film with animation and also showing the archival practices around this thing. So um, I think it's different uh, related to the goals of, of the archive. Now, sometimes you have to, to show how is this that we call archive? How is how is happening? No? So in this short, you, you can see you can see also a screening that we we made this, this house and other uh, things related to to this uh, experience. We say we we would like to do it more more uh, many times, not just for the for this this time that I'm, I am visiting you. So um, I think it depends of which goals, but also it's uh, part of the aesthetic of the archives. No, mm -hmm. it's, it's the aesthetic mm -hmm. the aesthetics of the access. To say that the center in the center of the archives are is the people. No, we are the archive is not a, a group of documents. The archives are group of documents that must be read, 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 reading by people, read. like mm -hmm. read by people. No, we mm -hmm. we as we said in Mahasen uh, film uh, and that I love to to see it uh, is the the performance of reading is recreating the life no we are not hearing mm. voices in the archive we are not hearing the voices of the past we are hearing our own voice mm. reading recreating no we are like a, the transformation of our body when we are reading the document so right. that's why i think it's important to show or it creates a uh, relationship not just as a representation or or like a illustration of the technical process is also to create this transfiguration of the, of our bodies when we are in the archives and that's why i think it's useful to show it no and also because sometimes you cannot uh, put all the documents in the screen no you have to choose how to what how to put it and what part of this experience of reading or, or, or found it, it's important to your, your story, no? Uh, Mahasen said something about the coincidence, no? The methodology of the coincidence in the archives, mm. no? The methodology mm -hmm. of, of the hide things and the methodology of how to open boxes, it's, it creates a, it's a, it's a story related. And also to the, to the people that is going to see the films, they are, we are uh, giving them clues, no? We are giving them clues to, to, to make their own research, no? Research. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's my opinion. About it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mahasan, do you want to say anything about um, representing the actual research in your film? Um, I mean, I should say that, you know, also when I think about my work, uh, I also think of, um, you know, it's it's basically building on uh, what uh, other women from previous generations have worked on, you know, I mean, this question of how do we build on our experiences, right? Uh, uh, you know, not in terms of the story per se, but also in terms of filmmakers, in terms of researchers, in terms of archivists and, and, and academics also, you know, uh, how do we uh, 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 find the overlapping areas in, in the work that we do? And how do we uh, bridge, you know, the gaps in our, in our works? Uh, 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 and how do we, yeah, build on uh, the, the work of previous generations? Because, you know, I, I think mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, my work really is is uh, is very much connected to you know what other what other Palestinian women have have uh, in terms of you know other researchers uh, have 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 worked on. So if it wasn't for the work that they've started, uh, and me as a filmmaker and researcher is taking this work 
uh, uh, further, uh, you know. Um, so yeah, it's it's the the generational uh, work that we do uh, 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 through film, right. through research. Yeah, yeah, it's cumulative. Um, so as as we continue to do this research and continue to document the sources, you're just creating a larger and larger body for people to pull from. So the nuance can continue to come through. Hopefully, we can learn more about all of the people that you're um, you're interested in looking at and all of the issues that we're interested in looking at. One of the things that I thought was really beautiful in your film also was the phone call that you had um, where you were looking for this home um, where these 300 people, 300 women met. Was it 300? Am I, was I right about that? Okay. Um, and yeah. just how, you know, that's another aspect of the research where you're not in an archive looking for that, but you found this person's phone number and were able to reach out to them and just piecing together through memory and with whatever images you have, walking through the streets that they were in and trying to track down through both this visual built environment, which is a visual record of its own, the city itself, and then through this phone call and recollections, where is this site? And yeah. I, I would like for you to just say, you know, um, why do you think it's important to recognize the site of something like that? Right. Absolutely. Uh, it's a really great question. A question. And then, you know, like a lot of uh, um, the academics that so I sometimes work with, you know, they're like, you're, you're a visual artist. So why do you need to tell us exactly where that location is? Uh, and yet, you know, you, you know, one of one of my friends, he was telling me, well, you know, you've got similar architectural uh, 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 structures that you can use, you know, but again, yeah. here is the work, you know, you know, us filmmakers, when, when you know, we uh, uh, we build our, our work on research, you know, we, we yes, we are filmmakers. Yes, we are people who are dealing with visual materials and, and we try to, you know, we, we, we uh, write narratives visually. Uh, but yet, you know, uh, uh, the importance of the research, you know, we are also researchers, you know, we're also and and and, and here. It, you know, the, the location is really important because it's part of the story. It's part of the process of, of you know, uh, identifying, you know, wh what the organization that these women went through, for instance, right? It's also, it's also you know, recognizing what was stolen, you know. Uh, 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 you know, it's, yes, I mean, it's, it's a house that gathered 300 women. It's part of the story. It's part of the history. Uh, uh, it's part of, of you know, of, of the, the as trying to to answer the questions, you know, of of how they did it, you know, how they met, what time was it in the day, uh, uh, who were the neighbors, you know. So uh, uh, again, you know, finding the exact location becomes uh, it's integral to, to to the story, integral to the research, uh, and integral to again reclaiming what was stolen. You know, by what, after the state of Israel was was uh, was was created, because the properties that we see in the film, mm. these are properties that Palestinians don't have access to anymore. These are mm -hmm. homes of Palestinian people who were expelled from the west side of Jerusalem in 1948, uh, and and whose answer, who, whose whose children cannot return now to these to these places to these homes. Uh, so yes, so identifying you know that that property uh, and whether you know uh, the, the family were renting or whether they owned the property, you know, it's it's part and parcel uh, of the research and the story. Absolutely, and then there's also so so much richness in looking for it because then you are given the luxury of being able to see so many different houses that could have been the house. And in that way, you get a wider view of the street. You just you start to understand the neighborhood. It's just, um, yeah. I mean, I, I get it. I'm 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 there. But I wanted I'm to glad. hear you I'm articulate it. <laughs> <laughs> wanted to hear you articulate it. I mean, for me, I'm I like, so what are the what are the that. trees that are growing there? You know, what's the view from the All window? Right. It starts to really come together as um, you you build character through that. You have clear understandings of who these people are through mm. what they saw every day, um, what they smelled, right. you know, who they were looking right. at, what their, who their neighbors mm -hmm. were, all of those details. So we are coming towards the end of this conversation and I wanted to check in to see if we have any questions from um, the audience that we should bring up. If not, we can keep it moving, but is that out there? Okay, none yet. You guys, ask some questions. We're here.
<laughs> um, okay. So one thing um, that I wanted to talk a little bit about was, again, about an, this notion of access and um, something that I always kind of struggle with when I'm dealing with this incredibly large archive that my, so my family has founded the Afro-American newspaper in 18, well, it was founded in 1892 and they bought it in 1897. So it's been owned and operated by my family for all that time. And like you were saying, Mahasin newspapers can be a really rich source of archival material and information um, because it essentially is a firsthand account. And there's about 3 million photos in the collection um, and thousands of letters and you know 129 years of journalism from a black perspective specifically in, in the United States. And so something that I, you think about often is that I want everybody to have access to this. You know, I want to just like send everything out into the world so everyone can see it. And then Sutsu, what you mentioned earlier about, well, there's certain things that maybe we should hold a little bit closer, that maybe someone from the community needs to be there in order for someone else to access it. I'm dealing with all of these questions. And then there's also the thing of like, once you make a digital file and put it out into the world, it's just out there. And, you know, uh, one of our revenue streams is through licensing. And so how do you build in some protections for the images while giving access and all of these different things that we have to contend with. And I just want to pose a question to both of you of what you what your vision of a truly accessible archive would be, what your ideal archive would be that you could work with and, and how you imagine that operating. And this might be kind of a selfish question because I'm taking notes like, how do we do this? <laughs> <laughs> Well, in, in my imagination, it's a lot of work, a lot of, uh, um, yes, you, you are not going to have enough work to, to, <laughs> to make all these um, recommendations with our imaginary uh, perfect <laughs> archive, open archive. No, but it's true, no? It's true that it's a lot of work. So in order to this idea, we need that the archive might be in a community context. I mean, not mm -hmm. just one person giving access, because sometimes it's, um, well, not sometimes, all the time, uh, it's not enough no, to answer the questions. And I think in my, in my perfect archives, archive is not, an, it's not just the building. It's a, it's a place to make copies, to make your own activities in the archive, not the archive giving access to their precious document. It's a place when, where you can organize your own activities as community, as a researcher, as a student, as a filmmaker, something that where you can go to, to ask and also a place where you can go to put things in this in this mm -hmm. place that we call archive. No? But this is an imagination that when, because I'm thinking in my own community, but if I think in the national archive, or in the colonial archives, I think one of the things or one of the change must be uh, the diversity in the with um, the the workers' diversity. I mean, mm. I yeah. I'm not from the Nyanyu community. I'm not for the Mayan community. I'm not from the Zapotec community. Right. If the nationals, if the Cineteca Nacional has a Mayan, a Zapoteca, a Nahua, a Mije, a Nyanyu worker, we are going to answer the question the, uh, in a mm. different way. No? The last year, uh, uh, the, I don't know, a project from the UNESCO uh, called me to, with a kind of the same question. No? How can we um, uh, return those images to the, com to the indigenous mm. communities? No? And they mm -hmm. made a kind of uh, inventory of the name of the communities, no? Mayan, Zapotec, and now on. And then the, the first idea was to, uh, uh, to research these uh, words in their own catalogs and return no? the Mayan to the Mayas, the Zapotecs to the Zapotecs, mm. like just mm -hmm. returning. No? But why, if, the, if we create another experience, why? How can we create the environment for the Mayan or the Zapotec or the Nahuatl or the Palestinian or, 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 or the things that need these, these questions to be involved in the process? No? I mm -hmm. think in my, in my imaginary archive, this is the, the turn of the, of the axis. No? Yes. 
Mm. Thank mm. you. Um, great, great. And, and I would like to build on that is yes, it's the issue of accessibility. It's also uh, the issue of uh, classifying the archives through the community's perspective, you know, through mm -hmm. the language that the community is familiar with, uh, through the stories that, that, that come from within the, the, the community itself. Uh, and then uh, the last point would be is also, I mean, from the, the Palestinian context of, uh, 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 you know, we always we always need to we always think that we need to protect the archives because you know once you find material you're also you're always scared that you know it will be taken away from you yeah. because again to this point you know uh, uh, th that that is th that that is still a very vulnerable uh, situation with uh, um, you know with the political context that that we live in so it's uh, it's duplicating you know the archive and 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 distributing it you know uh, 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 in different locations in different places uh, uh, to 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 uh, to provide accessibility. I think that's really interesting and something that you said earlier um, kind of comes back where you were talking about how there's no central national archive but it's dispersed and how there's actually power in that dispersal because it means that there's pieces everywhere that people can hold on to and maybe there's another another framework mm -hmm. that could be an online space or something else where mm -hmm. the pieces come together mm -hmm. and community can be formed um, in, an, in a different sort of space. Thank but I both. just have sorry. I just have, <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. Sorry, I, I just have to, to to say that you know, yeah, it is scattered. But again, it's scattered in different colonial archives all over the world. You know, right. So yes, you've got the personal right. archives of people, uh, and and you know that we need to be mapping as well as to map the 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 the, the material uh, that is available in the colonial archives. And maybe you know, the last point is 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 you know is is the reclamation of this information. You know, like it's, it's the reclamation of the uh, uh, the uh, um, you know, subalterns uh, uh, material, you know, that was taken away from colonial archives to bring it home. But yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much to both of you for those um, really expansive visions of how we might move forward and just wonderful reflections on your own work and histories and careers and everything. It's been such a pleasure talking with you today. I think we're right Thank at you. the end of our panel. And I just want to say thanks again to Black Star and to everybody who's tuned in and watching. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend of films and conversations. <laughs>